13 on two Wednesday. Oh my gosh, it's already Wednesday. Yeah, it is Wednesday, January 13th. Um, woke up early. Uh, we aren't, well, Justin isn't scheduled to be at the stadium till nine o'clock. And the stadium's only about five minutes away from the hotel. So just waking up early, um, waiting to see if I can hear from the recruiter because I am gonna go with Justin to the stadium to see if I can actually work there. But, <laughs> yes, it's, but the re my recruiter was like, there's no guarantee it'll take you, but it doesn't hurt to try. So I feel very uneasy because I don't even know if I'll be able to stay at the stadium with him, if I'll be working somewhere here in Sacramento or they're gonna make me go somewhere else completely. Um, so yeah, it's going to be another day of just not knowing what I'm going to do. I haven't even checked outside this one. Let's see what Sacramento looks like during the day. Oh. And this hotel is like really close to the airport so we can hear the planes flying like all night. So I just heard back from one of our recruiters. So there's no need for another therapist at the arena that Justin's working. And she was saying that the city that I was originally contracted or the city that I was originally assigned to, which is close to San Diego. So basically it was Brawley, California, which is like an hour and a half away from San Diego. So that was like a nine hour drive from San Francisco last night, which is why I was like so adamant about like not driving there by myself last night. There's not even an airport in Brawley, California. It was like, you'd have to drive, fly into San Diego and drive like an hour and a half to the city. And so she said, um, they're willing to start me tomorrow in Brawley. Um, so basically like, I would spend all day traveling today. Um, but I'm like last minute asking like, is there any need for me in San Sacramento just to save me a trip down to Brawley? Which I don't know, we'll see. She's gonna see if there's something they can do. I don't know. Um, we already were looking at flights to San Diego and then like renting a car for me to drive down to Brawley, which would mean that Justin would stay here in Sacramento and I'd be down in Southern California. Um, which was what, you know, that was like our worst fear for this whole assignment, but it is what it is. Um, so yeah, I guess I'm just going to wait to hear if there's anything, um, they can do to keep me here, but I don't know, I don't know. I'm so sad. So Justin just left for work and we still haven't heard anything so I booked the flight and the car and I'm pretty much heading to Brawley, California today. My flight's at 12.55, um, just warming something to eat real quick. This is that kanji from yesterday that we got at the dim sum place in San Francisco. <sighs> okay, so I have about an hour before the shuttle. Luckily, the hotel has a shuttle that'll take me to the airport. I have about an hour um, before I have to go. thought I would catch up and honestly just tell you guys why I'm even doing this channel again. I feel like I haven't even had a chance to say why and what the thought process behind it all was. Um, Basically, I guess when I became a respiratory therapist, I had a lot of friends and family that were like, especially if they're not in the um, healthcare field, like they had no idea this was even a job, had no idea what my job entails. Um, and I just realized like, wow, a lot of people just don't know anything about respiratory therapists. I mean, I even had aunts and friends of family that were respiratory, respiratory therapists for so long and I had no idea. Like for the longest time, I thought they were all nurses too, you know? So then when I left my full-time job and became a travel therapist, I guess on social media, everyone was like, where are you going? Like, why are you at all these hotels? Like, where do you travel? And, um, and even my parents and my family were always just like, man, what is it like? Like when you travel from place to place and especially when COVID hit and I was doing the COVID deployments. It was hard to tell people like where I was all the time and like what was going on. So I thought, you know what? I have this platform to have this channel. It was like, all right, when I can have like a little video diary to kind of show my family and friends where I am and what I've been through. 
And honestly, the most number, the number one thing for me would be to kind of shed some spotlight on what re respiratory therapists do and their involvement with the pandemic. You know, COVID-19 is a respiratory virus and I feel like respiratory therapists haven't been given enough spotlight for all that they do, not just during COVID, but all the time. Basically what you'll be seeing on my channel, um, just kind of following us around as we travel around. I'm hoping to travel for the rest of the year. I don't know about Justin. This is actually his first uh, travel contract um, outside of Texas. He was doing a few COVID deployments um, in South Texas that I was doing. Um, but this is his first time outside of Texas. So it just, it really sucks that we're getting separated so soon. Um, yeah, we were super bummed. And we're, we're, we're still kind of trying to hope we're still hoping that maybe there's a chance we'll be in the same place, but at this point, I'm just getting ready to go. But yeah, so, I don't know, hopefully that sounds interesting. <laughs> um, but yeah, as you can see two days into this assignment, just how crazy it can be. And I haven't even seen any patients yet. <laughs> Sometimes just simply, some for me with these assignments, it's like just being at work is the most sane place for me to be because there I know what I'm supposed to do, what my job is, and I just focus on that and being with my patients. Everything else outside of it, of like traveling and stuff, it's just so, it can get frustrating because the number one word I'm using, you've gotta be flexible, so. Oh God, my back. flight was pretty uneventful okay no like even before that so my flight was to San Diego I still hadn't booked a hotel for tonight in Crawley Brawley I don't even know where I'm going Brawley every time I tell people here in California where I'm being deployed to no one knows or even heard of that city it's Brawley I think it's Brawley I hadn't booked a hotel in Brawley yet so I'm like on this website, so they give you, my agency gives you this website where you can get discounts on like hotels and cars. No hotel is available. I mean, there were like some like rundown hotels that were available, but I'm not staying, I was like, I'm not staying somewhere where I don't feel comfortable. The city is like super close to the border. It's two hours away from San Diego. Um, and there were just no hotels left. And I had like actually just like found one room at this one of the hotels. I tried to book it and then it said it wasn't available and then it showed another room that was available so I tried to book a that and then it said it wasn't available again and I was like I really hope they didn't charge my credit card sure enough they charged it twice so they charged like a thousand dollars on my card for a room I never got the plane is about to board and I'm like on the phone with them trying to get my refund back get on the plane I still don't have a room to stay in tonight so I was like you know what F it I'm staying in San Diego. I'm just gonna wake up really early and drive to Brawley to the hospital and I'll figure out the housing situation later. <laughs> and so like I get off the plane and I look like a fool carrying these two luggages like around. And it took forever to get a rental car. I finally get a rental car. And if you really know me, you know I am not the greatest driver. Oh my gosh, it took me like an hour to get to the hotel that was like two miles away from the airport. I just get so lost when I'm in like downtown areas. Like I, I just hate it. And I like, I guess I had put the address wrong in the phone and it took me to the wrong hotel. Then I put the right address in. I couldn't find the entrance 
to like valet the car because I know I'm not going to be able to park this car downtown. Um, so yeah, it's like 4.15 and I'm finally here in San Diego and I really wanted to like go to the beach and like walk and explore. I haven't been here in like so many years and I'm just defeated. Like I checked in and I was like, hey, do you guys like sell anything here? Like I bought two bottles of wine because I was just like, you know what, we gonna do this. I'm just so stressed out. Like I called Justin, let him know I was here. I was getting really frustrated on the phone because I could not find the hotel. Oh, and then I get to the hotel, I pull up to valet and there's like fire trucks, police officers swarming the front of the hotel. And the staff's like, welcome, come on in. I'm like, is this something that I should be worried about? And they're like, no, you'll be fine, come on in. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like what? what is my life right now? And I know I'm complaining and acting like it's the end of the world and I shouldn't, but it was just a pretty stressful day. And knowing that tomorrow I have to drive another two hours to Brawley to start work, and I still don't know where I'm staying when I get there. <sighs> yeah. So I think I'm going to order some tacos, open this stuff up, and just relax before I have to leave tomorrow. So since I'm too tired to do anything here in San Diego, I was like, all right, I'm going to order some food. Yes, I'm emotionally eating because it's been a bad day. <laughs> so I ordered this place called the Taco Place or something like that. Carne asada fries. Mmm. Oh my god, oh my gosh. And look at this freaking burrito. Oh my gosh. Look how big this thing is. Ah! Gosh, okay, so I'm gonna enjoy this and this and I'm gonna call it a night.